Algebra 2, this is section 5.4 on factoring quadratic expressions. This is the first part of the video. Second part's already online, so make sure you uh, get both of these watched. The first thing we do when we factor something, now factoring, just so you understand, is division. That's all we're doing, okay? So keep in mind that factoring is a fancy word for division. You're breaking something up into its natural products what it multiplies together. When we say product, we're talking about what it multiplies together. So when we say factor, the very first thing you always have to ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor? We'll always refer to it as a GCF. I look and I look at all the terms and I say, is there anything in common to all of these? I see a 4 in common to all of them. Now, I want you to keep in mind that may be the only thing you can do may be only thing you can do. I say that because you may come across a question on a quiz or, or a test where that's it. That's all I was asking you to do was pull out the greatest common factor. This part right here does not factor any further. And we're going to do a lot of them in this particular lesson where these three things will factor. But this does not factor because you can't find any factors of 3 that have a difference of 5. None. I mean, the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1, and their difference is clearly not 5. So the thing that these two things have in common is not only do they have a 3 in common, but they also have an n in common. So I'm going to pull out the 3n. In other words, all I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm dividing each one of these by 3n to see what's left. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and n gets rid of one of those n's. So we have 3n. 3 goes into 24 8 times, and the n's cancel out, so I have a minus 8. So that's all you can do with that one, just like on the previous one. All you could do is pull out the 4. Now, you'll notice in this next example, I'm always going to say, is there a GCF? And the answer to that one is no, there's no GCF. But that's the first question I have to ask, always. Is there a GCF? I'm not going to do any of these problems without pulling out a greatest common factor because I make my life much more difficult if I do. Okay, so... When I factor these things, I'm looking for things that multiply together to give me the certain parts. Um, you guys know from your days in Algebra 1, the term FOIL, firsts, outsides, insides, lasts. Well, factoring is just going backwards through that process. Well, the only way you come up with the firsts is, is from this term right here. And the only way that's going to happen is if I take an x times an x. And the only way you can come up with the last is to multiply, or the last term right here, is to multiply the last together. So I know that these two things have to multiply together to give me 7. Well, there's no options there. Okay, It's not like I can do 7 or 2 and 3.5. It's 7 and 1. We're only dealing with integers. I mean, it could get nasty and ugly like that, but we're not going to do that to you. Now, the signs that go in here must both be the same because their product is positive. So either these are both plus or they're both minus. Well, the inside, neg 1x and 7x, would both have to be positive in order for their sum to be 8x. So x times x gave me x squared. Then I've got 7x for the outsides, 1x for the inside, that adds up to 8x, and 1 times 7 is 7. Now, you can do that with some type of box method where you're, um, <clears throat> where you're looking, if you've, done, if you've used the box before, you can do something like this, where you're saying that these two things have to add up to 8x. And you can put 1x there and 7x there. And then take the greatest common factor of that particular column. Greatest common factor of that particular column. 
greatest common factor of that particular row. Greatest, there's nothing in common between x and 7 but a plus 1. And then, so you can do it that way too. So whichever way is more comfortable to you, whether you just want to look at it and say, okay, um, what kind of things, x times x gives me x squared, what types of things multiply together to give me 8 but add up to 6? Well, obviously that's plus 4 and plus 2. You know, if you want to do that same method where we did x squared here, 8 here, and you sit there and think about 4x and 2x because they add up to 6x. And greatest common factor, greatest common factor, greatest common factor, greatest common factor. And then on the outside you'll see your, your answer. Okay, there it is. Those two are factored. In example three, first thing I'm going to ask, GCF? And the answer is no. So, I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to continue the process of factoring. So, the only way we're going to get x squared is x times x. The only way we can get 72, well, there's several ways to get 72, but we want the product, or we want the two things to add up to negative 17. So, 8 and 9, they multiply together to give me 72. And if they were both minuses, they would add up to negative 17. How about this? We've got. Hopefully, this is uh, this is ringing a bell to you from your days in algebra one. So they have to multiply together to give me 12, and add. I see the plus sign, so I know it's add up to negative 7. So that has to be a minus 3 and a minus 4. Okay. So x times x. Oh, first of all, no GCF. That's the first thing. Got to check for the GCF. Now this time, they have to multiply together to give me 12, but their difference, that's subtraction, has to be negative 1. Difference has to be negative 1. So I know that 4 and 3 multiply together to give me 12, and they are one unit away from each other, so that means this one has to be negative and this one has to be positive because they're insides and they're outsides, negative 4x, and positive 3x would add up to negative 1x. I wonder if I can give this guy a beard. He needs to be a little bit more pronounced. Okay. We've got an x and an x. Factors of 32, well, there's lots of factors of 32, but they have to have a difference of 14 units. They have to be 14 units away from each other. So 8 and 4 are not a good choice because 8 and 4 are only 4 units away from each other. We need them to be 14 units away from each other. So it'd have to be 16 and 2. Um, and when you do the insides and the outsides, we want negative 14x, so it has to be a negative 16 and a positive 2. Their product would be negative 32, and their insides and their outsides would add up to negative 14x. So in part two of the video, you're going to deal with some other coefficients and see how to work with those.